Because consumers now are shopping more of their emotions, bringing to life the experience of the economy. And with these changes in consumer habits, it's important for companies to understand in these times of extreme competition, how they remain competitive. And on today's show, we've got some economic experts and a company that's thriving in this sector. And we're gonna share some advice and tips on how you can create and improve your customer loyalty. On today's panel, I'm joined by Richard Lim, who's the CEO of Retail Economics, David Scott, who's the head of Ledger and Retail at NatWest, and also Spencer Wong, who's the head of Digital Experience at Made.com, one of the leading digital design brands. Welcome. Richard, at Retail Economics, you've got a, a real sort of insight into the macro trends that are shaping the market. And what are the major changes being? I think what we're seeing in the industry is, uh, is really fast-paced structural change. So some of the key trends are that continuous migration towards online. So online accounts for about 18% of retail sales at the moment. Uh, but our working assumption is that will rise to about 50% of non-food within the next 10 years. So that's going to be significant strain on the industry. But also the role of experiences will become much more important and a much more critical differentiator for retailers and brands. Um, and finally, it's also just about managing costs we're operating in really hostile cost environment with rising operating costs from national living wage, national minimum wage, the apprenticeship levy, business rates, and all of these costs are adding pressures and really bearing down on profitability. And who's driving this change? There's a few factors that will drive this growth. One of them will be uh, an aging population. So within the next 10 years, 50% of the population will be Gen Zs and Millennials. 50% of the, of, of the consumer population will be Gen Z and Millennials. But also improvements in technology, faster, cheaper, speedier deliveries, and also things like in-home deliveries, where actually uh, there's, you know, people are piloting, delivering uh, online parcels into people's homes, even when they're not in. If you look at who is who is spending their money? Your sort of Gen Zs and your Millennials. It's how do you tie into what's important and ethically sound for those guys, um, and how do you attract them to your business? And, and typically, they spend a high proportion of their income online. And as they get older and they become more commercially significant, that will have a knock-on implication for uh, for the retail sector. So, Richard, why are many companies struggling to deal with this change? It's really about the pace of change, and for many retailers, uh, they are essentially just struggling to pivot their business models towards a more digital and experience-led model. And, uh, and put really simply, there's many incumbent retailers that essentially have too many stores, too much space, uh, unsuitable space, and they're dealing with inflexible lease structures, upward-only rent reviews. And it's these kinds of factors that are really Inhibiting, inhibiting their ability to be able to pivot quickly enough to embrace that change in, in consumer behaviour. So how important now is that whole that sort of consumer that customer journey, that experience? Mm. Well, I think it's a really important point, actually, because it's not just about online, it's not just about on, you know, offline or stores. It's about providing an omni-channel environment, an omni-channel proposition for consumers. So increasingly, if you, especially in apparel, Consumers are being inspired by social media, uh, but then they might want to go into physical locations to touch, feel, try things on, but then continue their customer journey online. So Which leads me very neatly into Spencer here. So made.com, made.com is a clue in the name, yeah. but now you're opening physical stores. So to explain the strategy there. Yeah, so I think, I mean, with Made, we think of ourselves, we're, we're a digital first brand. We've always been that. Um, you know, we think of the customer journey starting and beginning online. Uh, but, you know, if you look at how different categories are shopped, so, you know, if I'm looking for a home accessory, let's say I'm looking for a vase, it's a low price point. If I come to the website, I see some very nice photography and things like that, I might be willing to purchase that on my first visit. If you contrast that with a sofa purchase, something that's very considered higher price point, I'm probably not making that decision on my own as well. I'm, I'm talking to my partner, maybe even asking friends and, and family for advice. Uh, what we see is that type of purchase, uh, they're coming back to the website about eight times or more, and it's happening over a period of a couple of weeks. Uh, so within that period, there's, there's plenty of time to come in, uh, come into the showroom. You know, some people want to see that, they want to sit, they want to feel, they want to touch those, those, those products. 
uh, and that helps build the confidence to kind of make that final purchase, which they might make a few days later back at home or what have you. Uh, so, you know, the showroom plays a, a part in that, whether it's early and kind of understanding the brand a bit more or even at that late kind of uh, consideration or closing phase of it. Which of the sectors are sort of succeeding in this area? I think if you look across the broader piece, um, if you look at casual dining, um, I think some of the uh, innovation to reposition some of the operators has been phenomenal. You've got well-funded, well-invested in management teams that can make themselves feel part of the local community. Um, if I look at hotels, it's very much about understanding what your consumers want. Is it a budget offering? Do they want to speak to somebody as they come in? Or is it, is it just technology that can get me into my room um, and that's fine for me? Um, so it's adapting to that. Um, again, with travel, it's, it's how do you embrace the technology aspect and recognise that that meets your customers' needs. Consumers embrace convenience, value and choice and range. And so a lot of those pure online retailers have really, um, have, have really offered that convenience factor for consumers and that's, and that's why they're growing so quickly. And Spencer, why are these showrooms such an important part of the customer journey? Well, I think the showrooms can provide a, uh, a valuable human connection uh, and through that kind of increased loyalty, increased trust in the brand. Uh, and so to kind of, you know, in order to try to measure some of that, we've done different kind of quantitative as well as qualitative methods to try to figure that out. So uh, in a recent survey we did to try to understand, you know, how did people hear about the showroom? Uh, over 60% of them had heard about the, the, the brand previously, either online or through, through advertising and stuff like that. Uh, and so they're, they're, they're the people that are continuing the journey as well as other people who are just discovering it for the first time kind of walking by. Uh, and so when we, when we launch a show, the, some of the impacts that we look at is increase in order volumes and, and sessions in the local area. So we look at a kind of a, a radius around the showroom and what we see is a, 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 a lift in orders in a five mile radius typically. Uh, and also what we see is when we attribute visits uh, to the showroom, we see that average order value being significantly higher than our typical uh, average order. And that, that kind of goes to the notion that people are kind of looking at those considered purchases, those larger items, uh, and so that's where the value of the showroom comes in, that they can experience that and then feel confident with their purchase later on. So David, what in your view are the, the key things that companies need to think about? Um, I kind of guess if I pick three areas, if I may, um, if you think of the ethics behind um, the operator, um, you think of the people that are that the consumers that are spending their money in their shops, um, what are they looking for? They want to understand the person behind the business, um, the ethics of the business. Um, do, I, do I pick my goods up in a plastic bag, a paper bag? Um, how do you get those goods to you um, and where are they manufactured? And sustainability piece, that's key. Um, in terms of the partnerships that the business offers, um, so how do you make a large corporate feel like a part of the community? Um, so how do you integrate yourself into the, the wider community to feel part of uh, a value-add piece for that um, whilst retaining the, the corporate governance and the, the, the good, good business models behind that? Um, and I guess the third piece is the cost focus on staff and wider costs. And Richard, what's your view on the future of the high street? That's something that you know, everyone's talking yeah. about. I think what we're going to see is the continued polarisation in physical property in retail. So I think in, on the one hand, we're going to have experiential destinations like Westfield, Oxford Street, Birmingham Boring, Leeds Trinity, continue to attract sustainable levels of footfall. But retail is just part of the equation. It also needs to have food and beverage and leisure, but really become experiential. The other part of the market, lots of kind of secondary high streets throughout the UK, if they're not where people live, work or near transport hubs, then they're really suffering, they're really susceptible to the threat of, the, of, of online. And so it's really these locations that are, are under the most amount of pressure. So there's no sugar coating really. It's, if you're a, one of these areas, particularly high street, that's not near where people live or work, then the future's not bright really, is it? It's about repurposing and bringing back the community as being the heart of, uh, of local high streets. David, what's your prediction for the future? I think it's fascinating. I think the, 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 the partnership angle um, of how retailers, I mean, if you look back at history, retailers have always reinvented themselves. Um, they've always tried to keep abreast of consumer behaviours. Um, consumer um, confidence is a fickle thing at the moment, um, and it's how you can stay abreast of that and partner with the local community um, to really make a, make a difference to the offering. 
Um, I see that as key going forward. Um, I think the reliance on wider professional partnerships uh, is key as well. Obviously, the bank play a part in that. But as to the likes of, of retail economics with Richard, um, there's, there's a lot to learn, um, there's a lot to share. And I think that's, that's key that we do that. And Richard, you're the, sort of the ec expert with the macro view. What's your big prediction? Um, I, no, I agree with um, of both of the, yeah, the general sentiment and I think experiences um, will play an absolutely fundamental role in retailers differentiating themselves from their competitors. And I think actually what we've seen over the last kind of couple of decades is almost uh, an abundance of material possessions in the UK and, uh, and it's led to almost this kind of what economists call peak stuff. So households have got so many material possessions uh, they're spending and diverting their attentions elsewhere towards experiences, towards leisure. And so the role of experiences have act has actually um, is much more important and it's created economic value for consumers. And so this is why I think creating experiences to differentiate yourself uh, as a retailer from competitors is going to be a crucial thing. Uh, and that's thing offline and course. online. That's absolutely offline, online and also omnichannel. I want to thank the panel for a fantastic conversation about changing consumer habits. And if you want more information or advice or tips on changing consumer habits, then go to the NatWest Business Hub. Thanks again.